Hello, it's almost the middle of June, following on from planting out the beans yesterday and discovering uh, that some runner beans were growing in amongst the cabbages. Uh, I thought today we'd do a, a bit of a look around the rest of the vegetable garden and see how everything uh, in the different beds are growing. So these are some of the asparagus plants uh, I put in earlier in the year. They need a bit of a top dressing um, to cover their roots a little bit more, but they're doing okay. Uh, it is incredibly dry at the moment and I'm watering them every couple of days with a really thorough soaking. <laughs> and likewise in this bed there's some asparagus. I've also put those lettuce in, but they look like they're just about to go to seed. So it's definitely time to plant some more lettuces out here. The chive flowers are going over, but that's okay. I'll cut those back uh, and the chives will grow up again. And at the far end of this bed are the autumn planted shallots and some of those uh, have gone to flower but that's okay um, I'm just waiting for the bulbs to bulk out a bit because they're still quite small and this bed's got raspberries in it uh, these are supposed to be autumn fruiting raspberries but uh, these are part of my experiment and these are ones that i didn't cut back this year and it won't be long before we can have a look at the uh, double crop raspberry idea and see whether that's been successful but also in here are some autumn planted um, onions red onions and white onions and they are doing really well well strawberry beds continue to <laughs> have masses of strawberries in them we're picking pounds and pounds every day uh, which is very very nice it feels like an absolute luxury in the next two beds those are the beans and some beetroot and on the right are the parsnips this vegetable tunnel has the Asturian tree cabbage uh, and some red cabbages in it and they're looking good too I'm really pleased with how the uh, brassicas are looking this year and this next bed has uh, the mange too which is <laughs> which is doing really well Masses of mange too. And then nearest the camera there are four self-sown parsnips. I'm just leaving them in because I have no problem with mixed planting in the beds. Uh, that having that diversity of planting uh, I think is a good thing. And at the far end uh, we've got beetroot and some mooley. Now the mooley was, a, was an experiment. We haven't had it before. Uh, and it's a, it's a Japanese radish. It's a long white radish. Um, and I was told it was very very mild it's going to seed at the moment because it's got too dry and I don't know whether that has impacted on the flavour um, <laughs> my other ones haven't been pink at the top they've all been white but these are, are no good for us these are much too peppery um, almost burnt my tongue in fact, uh, I think grated uh, and mixed with a bit of cream, it would make a good alternative uh, to horseradish sauce. That's not a bad idea. I've been advised against eating uh, very much horseradish because of my thyroid, but possibly uh, a, a hot peppery sauce made from, from Mooney might be a nice alternative with a bit of roast beef. And the next bed has the Greek Gigantes uh, and some squashes in it. And this bed uh, has got a mixture. It's got some carrots uh, and some swede. It's got the leeks that are growing on. Um, it's got some, some something or other that I can't pronounce. Uh, so I'll pop that up on the screen. Uh, but it is a winter root that you eat. It's similar to parsnip, but not quite the same. That's an experiment for us. And then in the very far corner here, uh, <laughs> I've planted a blue hubbard squash uh, so that can uh, climb away across the uh, fencing behind it. And the 
liberal beans are doing okay you can see they're all slightly leaning towards the sun uh, and also in the direction that the wind blows uh, they get very dry uh, these are ones that are in planting pockets uh, within wood chip and this is not an ideal uh, i don't recommend it it's a lot of hard work to keep coming out and making sure that they are uh, they have enough moisture uh, i certainly don't think i'll be doing that again uh, in future years and there's the brusca tunnel and then on this side uh, there's more strawberries <laughs> which I just popped here uh, not quite knowing what to do with the plants last year and they are pr prolific these are some more autumn planted onions uh, and in between them are some sweet corn so as the onions come out it will make space for the sweet corn to grow on here are the four squash plants uh, I planted out just a few days ago uh, and the corn uh, interspersed it's all starting to look rather good and then in this brassica tunnel um, I don't know if you can see through the netting uh, we've got kales growing the kale aren't growing uh, quite as well as I'd like them to um, but they will catch up. I think part of the problem is they went in quite late. They were quite leggy when they went in and this soil hasn't been improved at all. Uh, they're effectively being planted into the field soil, um, which is usually uh, pretty good, but uh, it has been growing a, a seriously good crop of weeds for the last three years. So uh, possibly, uh, possibly they're struggling for nutrients a bit. I am keeping them fed. They've had a couple of feeds of uh, stinging nettle tea and I'll keep doing that on a weekly basis until they're really well established. And the pumpkins down in the surprise bed, well I've fed them, uh, I've watered them, I've given them an extra tonic boost uh, and hopefully uh, some of that yellowing will start disappearing and they'll, uh, and they'll pick up and grow even better. So vegetable beds number seven. Uh, 16 and 17 uh, are as yet unused they've got weed suppressing membrane over them uh, at least over 7 and 17 uh, to try and kill off the, the weeds that grew quite so vigorously last year uh, and bed number 16 there uh, part of the way through uh, making it into a raised bed uh, still got that to complete a few people have asked me uh, why we have such wide pathways here uh, and the reason is very simple uh, when we moved in I was really quite unwell and a lot of the time I was using a walking stick to get around and I was really <laughs> I was just became really conscious of my uh, physical uh, ability or lack thereof and I wanted to build in a, a bit of future proofing because there was the potential uh, that I could end up in a wheelchair uh, obviously I'm very fortunately you know that hasn't happened but I was really really conscious that it might be a case that uh, the only way that I was going to access this garden uh, was was in a wheelchair so I wanted to ensure that uh, I made enough space in between the beds um, that we could get a wheelchair up and down it uh, and that I could maneuver around it very simply uh, unaided because you know I want to keep my independence so so that's why they are so wide uh, all the all the pathways are at least three feet wide uh, and between beds five and six they are six feet wide uh, so that we could get a vehicle through uh, if we wanted to uh, at least part of the way uh, and, a, and a thin vehicle uh, maybe a quad bike or something so if we wanted to bring things through to deliver them we could uh, so that was the reasoning uh, for the pathways it's also the reason for wanting to raise the beds uh, up to about uh, 18 inches to two feet high uh, because as we get older uh, bending over is going to become you know, less comfortable and so uh, we are just trying to uh, future proof and allow ourselves to continue doing what we enjoy doing uh, for many years to come well that's it for me today i hope you enjoyed that look around uh, the veg garden and so, wherever you are in the world and whatever you've got planned for today, 
I hope it's a good one and I also hope you'll join me again tomorrow. Thank you.